Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Mott. I'm a solution architect here at PH Data. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can use DBT Cloud and set up custom targets within a single project. Now this is the overall end goal of what I'm gonna producing today. Before we go into that too much, I wanna cover some setup. So if you haven't already, I would highly suggest you head over to DBT courses and check out their DBT fundamentals. I have already gone through that course here and a lot of the setup is done based on what they showed in that course. Now in that course, it will take you through setting up connection to Snowflake and the target for all of your analytics deployments will be a single database called analytics. Within there, you're gonna have your development schemas as well as your production level schemas. And while that's great for demo and learning, they may not be ideal for enterprise deployments and in the real world. So I'm gonna show you how you can take what they did and modify it slightly to produce multiple different environment database targets. So what I've done in the setup here is basically followed along what they showed in the fundamentals course, which is also outlined at this link here, which you'll see in the description of the video if you want to just jump into this without going through the whole fundamentals course. But here they'll walk through how you load your data. Again, they're gonna give you the Snowflake commands to create a warehouse, a raw database, and again, like I said, analytics only database, and then your raw schemas. I've gone ahead and done the same thing, but instead of an analytics database, I created a DataMart dev, DataMart UAT for user acceptance testing, and a DataMart prod. Everything else is the same. I still have a single role of the schemas, and then I loaded the data from their public S3 bucket, just like they did. Now, in the fundamentals course, as you're setting up the project, you're going to create your default connection, and that's gonna be your development user. Now, after you're done creating that, you can always go back into your profile by clicking up here, a little gear, profile settings, go to credentials, go to the project that you created. In this case, I'm gonna show you the DataMark demo project. And over here, it'll remind you of what you set up when you made that initial project connection. It's gonna have your Snowflake account in this case. And then here in the fundamentals course, it would have told you to put the database name analytics. I've changed this to DataMark dev. I've also changed the warehouse name just so that I can see that it's slightly different. As well as the other thing is, I think that the same is DBT NMOT is your own custom schema for each developer in DBT. It is highly recommended you have your own custom schema so you don't stomp on each other when you're developing. The other thing I did change was also the target name. It normally it comes through as just the word default. I like to be explicit and I call this dev. And you'll see why in a little bit why I'm using dev here. So kind of jump right to it. The next thing is if you go into your IDE, which I already have open over here, you'll see this is what the fundamentals course has you create. You'll have models and your models are split into marks folder and staging folder and several different model tables <laughs> files underneath that. Your DPT project YAML, then they, they guide you through some customization already. This is where you'll see everything in the staging folder. It's gonna go to the staging schema. Everything in the March folder will go to the March schema. That's already setting up some custom schemas. However, you'll notice there's no mention database name here. So when you do your deployment in dev, you'll get the analytics database. And when you create a deployment job, you will also have the analytics database, which is not ideal in the real world. Now, let's remind ourselves what the Fundamentals course did, again, analytics, single database. In there, your dev deployments, when you deploy dev code or run dbt run from your IDE, it's gonna use, you're gonna get something like with your username, underscore, and marts, and underscore staging. And the reason for that is because there is this macro by default called generate schema name. And if you don't change it, this is the code that it uses to determine the schema name. So whatever's passed into it is custom schema name. That custom schema name comes from your dbt project YAML. It'll look here and say that model 
did you specify a custom schema? So in this case, for any model in the staging folder, the custom schema would be staging. So coming in with staging as your custom schema name, the next thing it does is it sets a variable called default schema to your target schema. That target schema, again, comes from your initial setup. So target schema in this case, dvtn mod for dev. So that is how you end up with default schema dbtn mod underscore custom schema, which will be either marked for staging. Because in this case, custom schema will always be filled in. So we won't ever have this scenario. We will always fall into the else because all of our models currently fall into these two folders. If we had built a model that did not fall into marks or staging, then it would fall into that other non-custom schema and just be deployed to the default schema only. Now this is fine for dev. It does exactly what we expect, but if you create a job and deploy, and in fact, if you follow the fundamentals when they create their job, they make the custom schema or the target schema, the word analytics as well. And as a result, when you deploy with that job, you're going to get analytics underscore marts and analytics underscore staging within the analytics database as well. So like, it's a little misleading that this is your production level schemas here, and you're kind of repeating analytics. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. But what I'm going to try and show you today is how to get it to look like this. You will have your dev IDE only connecting and deploying to the dev database. It'll each user will have their own custom schema. So in this case, I'm just showing DPT user two, user one, and it'll still have those custom schemas marked and staging based on each model. The UAT job that we're going to create will then specify that it's going to go to the UAT database. And we're going to drop off that prefix. We're going to just leave it as March and staging only. And then this should mimic very closely to what prod's going to do. This is where you can do your user acceptance testing after all your dev work has been checked in. You deploy the job and you can have BI models, Tableau models, whatever, kind of checking it out before you run it in production. Now, all three of these in this case are using the same raw database source. Maybe in a real environment, you might also have dev and UAT versions of your raw. But to keep things simple, I'm just going to use the single raw source for all three deployments in this case. So how do we end up doing this? So I've already explained how dev looks and as far as the target. So remember our target name is dev. Our Cus our default schema is dbtn mod. So what we want to do is we want to override. That doesn't work. This does not do what we want. Then this generates schema name. So we're going to override that. So if you come into my project and I'll have this code for you available and a link in the description of the video, but I am overriding the generate schema name macro with my own version. So when it determines what the schema is for a model, it's going to run my code and not the default code anymore. Custom schema, again, comes from your DPT project. So that's going to come in as either staging or marks. Then I have it still set the default schema to the target schema. Probably not needed because I'm only using that variable one time. I probably could have just left it as target schema everywhere, but I want to just do as minimal changes as possible. But then I check to see if that target name is dev. If, again, that comes from this target name here. If it is dev, then I've got to keep appending the default schema, dbtn mod in my case, with an underscore and the custom schema name coming from the dbt project file, just like it did in the fundamentals course. But for any other target, I'm going to not deal with the target schema and default schema and just use custom schema. And that's how I'm getting just the marks and staging schemas with no prefix in front of them. And that's it. That's the, really the only change to the actual project code. The rest of the magic happens in environments and jobs. So let me go show you that next. So back in your DBT dashboard, you want to go to the deploy dropdown 
and go to environments. Now I've already set them up. You, as part of creating your project, you will always have a development environment. It's required. The other environments you have to create. So let's jump into the UAT first. And I'll go into the settings. The only thing is you'll be prompted for when creating is a name. You can name it whatever you want. I just called it UAT in all other case in this case. It has got to be a deployment type because you can only have one development type per DBT project. And then in the magic is right here, database. This is where I'm specifying data mark UAT as my target database. There is also a schema still down here. Now you'll notice I have it just up as defined custom. But remember, my macro says custom schema coming in should always be used. Right, I'm not using target schema or default schema in any other environment besides dev. So that value really should never come into play. The only way it will happen is if I create a model that does not have a schema defined here. So in my case, I don't ever want to use the default schema. So it should always fall into custom schema. If by chance you didn't define one, the project will fail and you will have to correct that in your DPT project file. Now, let's go, once you've got your environment set up, you then have to create a job. So we'll jump back here and you'll see I have a job. Gonna go into that. You name the job, whatever you want. I call it UT deploy. You specify the environment that it's going to use and known as target name. Now I could have named it anything I want. Again, I call it UAT as long as it's not dev, our macro, Again, it's going to say, well, target is not dev, so we're going to use custom schema. But the environment is going to be the database that it specifies. So that is how, when we come over here and we will see, well, I'll first show dev, we've deployed here. So in dev, right, you're getting a DBT and MOT and staging. You get your default schema thrown in the front for each developer. And then in UAT, you will have just marks. That's where your tables are. And in staging, you have your views. And the same idea is set up with prod, right? Prod's gonna look just like that as well because it's not dev. The only difference is we set up a prod environment. So let's go to environments. Very much the same idea as UAT, you just name it prod. And obviously gotta make sure you target the prod database. Again, schema should not be used here. If it ever falls into this, then we did not define something correctly in our DBT project file. And then the job, pretty much the same idea. Called it prod deploy. Target name of prod, anything other than dev would work in our case. It's going to then use the prod environment to know which database it's going to. And this will determine which schemas. And that is how you end up with something looking like this. So I hope this video helped show you how you can set up custom targets with DBT. If you have questions or want to learn more about DBT, check out all our other great videos and blogs at phdata.io. Thank you, have a great day.